Tonight, our special transmission as Israel intensifies its attacks on Rafah City in Gaza. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahar Sayed. It has been 215 days since the onset of Israel's war. Israel has refused to accept a truce deal that was put forward by Qatar and Egypt. Hamas had agreed to the terms that included releasing Israeli captives and to temporarily halt the fighting. Despite international pressure, Israel has started targeting Rafah city in Gaza. Rafah is providing refuge to more than 1.4 million displaced Palestinians. Israel has ordered Palestinians to evacuate Rafah. The United Nations Children's Fund has warned that there is nowhere safe to go for 600,000 children living in Rafah. Following the evacuation order, tens of thousands of displaced, frightened, and exhausted Palestinians are seen packing up their belongings. Around 80,000 Palestinians have fled the city. In the past 24 hours, Israeli attacks have killed 60 Palestinians in Gaza. United Nations officials say 109 Palestinians have been killed since Monday. Most of the casualties include women and children in Rafah. United Nations officials say Israel's closure of the Rafah border is hindering access to vital aid and exacerbating the humanitarian crisis. The Palestinian News Agency reports Israeli ground forces are attacking residential buildings in the Zaytun neighborhood in Gaza. The attacks have left dozens of people injured. CIA Chief William Burns has returned to Cairo to after holding talks in Israel with Mossad Chief David Barnea and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The death toll from Israel's war continues to rise. At the time of writing, at least 34,904 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces. A report by the United Nations estimates another 8,000 are buried under the rubble. 78,514 have been wounded. Israel's revised death toll stands at 1,139. The Israeli military's takeover of Rafah crossing has cut off the only land route to Egypt. Israel is also threatening a full-scale invasion. UNICEF officials are warning of dire conditions as basic services dwindle and overcrowding worsens. The organization is appealing for an urgent ceasefire to prevent further harm. It says there is a need for humanitarian assistance to protect vulnerable children enduring the trauma of the war. Digital media outlet The Intercept reports the population of Rafah before the war was approximately 250,000 people. Since the onset of the war, displaced Palestinians from all corners of Gaza have taken refuge in Rafah. Rights groups say if Israel expands its operations in Rafah, it will lead to a mass exodus of civilians. The areas they are being directed to to flee do not have even a fragile, inadequate infrastructure. President Biden has signaled a potential pause in certain military aid to Israel. This decision follows reports of U.S.-made bombs being used to target civilians in Gaza. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has confirmed the pause of one shipment. Al Jazeera reports that the shipment included 1,800 bombs, each weighing about 900 kilograms. It also included another 1,700 bombs, each weighing 226 kilograms. Biden denounces Israel's actions in Rafah. He says the U.S. will not supply weapons if Israel continues to target civilians. Israel's ambassador is calling Biden's decision disappointing. Senator Bernie Sanders welcomes the pause. He is urging further action for a ceasefire. There has been mounting international pressure on the United States to stop its support to Israel in its war. Human rights advocates are pushing for stronger action. A recent poll highlights growing democratic disconnect over Israel's policy. Israel stands accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice. An interim ruling in January ordered Tel Aviv to take measures to guarantee humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza. The recent crackdown of student protests at Columbia University cost New York police $200,000. The protesters demand divestment from Israeli companies engaged in the war. The escalation occurred after negotiations failed, leading to a police raid to clear Hamilton Hall. 
Activists criticize the allocation of the funds. The crackdown is a part of a broader trend against Gaza protests. It echoes past costly responses. In 2020, policing George Floyd protests cost $150 million. These costs included overtime and settlement payouts. With ongoing pro-Palestinian protests, expenses are expected to rise. Critics say concerns extend beyond overtime costs. Prior policing suggests substantial legal settlements from protester lawsuits. This will add to the city's financial burden, which has already surpassed $500 million in misconduct settlements over the past six years. British multinational bank Barclays is facing scrutiny for increasing investment in companies supplying arms to Israel. A joint report by multiple advocacy groups shows Barclays has $2.48 billion worth of shares in firms producing Israeli arms. The bank has an additional $7.66 billion in extended loans. The figures mark a significant surge since 2022. Notable firms in which Barclays holds interests include Elbit Systems and General Dynamics. General Dynamics is a U.S. arms firm that produces components for war warplanes. Calls for boycotting the bank are increasing. Director of Palestine Solidarity Campaign Ben Jamal says Barclays is complicit in Gaza's plight. Asad Rahman of War on Want compares Barclays' actions to its involvement in the South African apartheid. Barclays is yet to respond to the allegations. Ontario Speaker of the Legislature Ted Arnott has decided to allow entry to the Queen's Park Legislative Building while wearing a kaffir. However, the ban remains within the legislative chamber. This decision comes after independent MPP Sarah Jama was asked to leave for wearing the scarf during the question period. Jama, along with new Democratic Party members Joel Hardin and Kristen Wong Tam, protested the ban. They called for the ban to be lifted. They said the ban is perpetuating racism. Premier Doug Ford, who previously demanded overturning the ban, says he will follow the new ruling. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.